السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. All praise due to Allah alone. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leads astray, none can show Him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Our dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of your program. As Kudan, I would like to remind you that in a couple hours, inshallah, we will begin another beautiful night the night of the 25th of ramadan so this is a beautiful night and it's not to be missed inshallah i hope that many of you are already in i'tikaf and in the masjid and those who are not in i'tikaf inshallah uh, you can either take your meal and break your fast in the masjid and stay from maghrib until you pray isha taraweeh and tahajjud then you pray fajr and if you can stay until uh, sunrise then you pray the duha and go home that would be a perfect deal inshallah this is a night not to be missed a few more nights left I wouldn't say the 25th and the 27th and the 29th only three nights I would say take advantage of the remaining six nights to the best of your ability inshallah may Allah accept from all of us our phone numbers beginning with the area code are 002 then 0100546923 Alternatively, area code 002, then 023855132, and the Facebook page is the R Muhammad Salah officially, official. And I, I do apologize for not posting any new videos on my page, nor going live, or even answering questions um, as usual on my page for the time being, because really the time is very tight, and we need to take uh, advantage of the remaining. Uh, time in Ramadan. So inshallah soon after Ramadan I will resume answering questions, posting videos and uh, doing the live broadcast especially best of the best. Barakallah feekum. We'll be more than happy to start receiving your valuable calls and concerns. We had a few pending questions. Sister Aziza from Qatar had a question about uh, may you please clarify the different uh, opinions about use water. Uh, the word used water here she means used in lifting the impurities whether major or minor impurities not used for drinking or uh, just mere washing the hands and she said the difference of opinion because there is a big difference of opinion with regards to the permissibility of utilizing the used water in a further purification process in simple words, somebody made wudu. And this wudu he performed in the bathtub or in a vessel. So the remaining water, the water that fell off his wudu or in a bucket of water, is still sitting there or some of it. In this case, somebody else wants to perform wudu. Can he utilize the same water? A husband and wife, for instance. Can she use the same water in the bucket for a shower to lift the major impurity to perform ghusl or to perform wudu or not? Indeed, there is a big difference of opinion. But for the water to be used, it must be in a stagnant place, like as I said, in the bathtub, in a bucket, or in a water well. But the running stream, you can, it, it renews itself. So you can bath, you can, even if people sometimes uh, pour the waste in the running stream. It is awful, of course, okay? And it is terrible as far as ruining the environment and disturbing uh, the life of other creatures. But we're talking about would that impurify and make the running stream impure? No, it will not. But if the water is stagnant and the amount is limited, this is, I'm not talking about a huge lake and you perform ghusl in it. That's perfectly okay because the water is huge. I'm talking about a limited area with a limited amount of water. The scholars have differed whether this water uh, is permissible to be used for further purification or not. I shall explain 
in sha Allah in detail uh, in a little bit. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Um Muhamza from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Sister Um Muhamza, welcome to Ask Huda. Thank you. Jazakallah for answering my questions yesterday. What I just you? wanted uh, to confirm about my qu last question, the first question yesterday. About uh, the husband died without giving the mehr to the wife. What to do? Alhamdulillah, you have answered. I just want to ask, can the wife just simply forgive it? Yes, absolutely. The wife or any creditor, if somebody borrowed from you a million dollars and you see that the person passed away, uh, or you see that he's not capable to pay. So you say, you know what? I pardon you. I write it off. You will be rewarded. That's perfectly fine. It is your right. So if you say, um, I pardon him. I don't want anything from dowry. Anyway, it's going to your children. So thank you, Sister Om Hamza. Yes, you can do that. And within one's life, the ayah says in Surah An-Nisa, وَآتُوا النِّسَاءَ أَصَدُقَاتِهِنَّ نِحْلَةً this is the ayah which mandates paying the dowry to the wife. Who pays the dowry? The groom must pay the dowry to the bride. Then, فَإِن طِبْنَ لَكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ مِّنْهُ نَفْسًا فَكُلُوهُ هَنِيئًا مَرِيئًا And this statement confirms two things. Number one, the original condition that the dowry is totally yours. Not that your dad, nor your mom, or your garden, or anyone have any right in it. And obviously not your husband, the one who paid the dowry. Then in Tribina, if the wives decided, you know what, that's too much for me. I'm not going to use all of that. Uh, just give me half of it. فَكُلُوهُ هَنِيَ Maria, Enjoy it. Halal. Lawful. She said, I'm not going to do anything with the money. And mashallah, you've given me a big house. You've given me everything I need. You can use the money for whatever you want. This is... She wants to give it in a charity, she wants to give it to you, she wants to use it whichever way, it's hers. If she gives you part of it, or full of it, or uh, the whole of it, it is permissible according to the ayah. Thank you, Sister Umm Hamz. So, now with the question concerning the water which had been used once in the process of purification. And this water is limited amount, and in a place which you can call it stagnant. It is not a running stream in a bucket, in a vessel, in a bathtub, okay? A lot of people, especially in some parts of the world, where they are told that, you know, the water only comes once a week. So they save the water in the bathtub. And they use this water. They use this water for wudu, for whatever. So some people make wudu. You even go to some masajid, old masajid. They have like basins. The water is in it, and people take the water from it and perform wudu, which means before me, several people have been performing water, uh, wudu using the same water, which also means that the water which fell from washing of their arms, their faces, once again was deposited in this basin. So this water is known as musta'mal, used water. Can it be used for further purification? Difference of opinion. Number one, Abu Yusuf, who was one of the great students of Imam Abu Hanifa, and he was a judge as well, and a chief judge, uh, said the water shouldn't be used for further purification. According to Imam Malik, it is disliked. So if they use it, it is permissible, and the wudu will be valid, but it is disliked. You should resort to another water which have, been, you have not been used for any purification before. Imam Abu Hanifa himself and his other student, Muhammad ibn al-Hasan, then Imam al-Shafi'i and Imam Ahmad in one of his views, which form the vast majority of the views of the scholars in this opinion. They say this water is tahir. It is pure. But it cannot be used for further purification. So there is a big difference between najis and pure and tahir. The water is tahir. Why? Because it was only used for wudu or even left in the measure impurity. But you cannot use it for further purification. Each opinion have long list of evidences. 
While Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and also Imam Ahmad in one of his views and Ibn Hazm of Wahiri and Imam Shawkani, follower, uh, the, the, the owner of uh, or the author of um, um, the beautiful book Nail al uh, are of the view that the water is tahir and can be used for further purification and this is what I tend to accept. There is no time to explain all the evidences and the disputes between the scholar. Wallahu alam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Halima from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum Halima. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, my question is, uh, what are some things that a woman can do, uh, especially in these last ten nights of Ramadan, um, if she is unable to pray due to either... Um, post-childbirth or menses. Hmm. Any other questions? Um, no, that's it. Sure. Do everything a normal person would do except for namaz. You don't pray. You don't offer the prayer because once you are in the menses or the post-delivery bleeding, you do not offer the prayer. And obviously you do not fast. And no husband and wife relationship. But Azkar, uh, dua, the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. What if I know that it is Laylatul Qadr? What invocation shall I supplicate best? He said, say, or you should say, and the hadith is collected by Ibn Majah in his Sunan, in his sound hadith. Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anna. In another narration, Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibbu Allahumma inna ka'afun kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa. One of the most beautiful supplications, it suits the occasion best. So keep making this dua. I'm pretty sure you have family and you have needs. Dua for yourself, dua for your family. Some, somebody is, may say, Sheikh, but this is dua, request, demanding things from Allah. I'm talking about ibadah. You demanding from Allah is the best form of worship. Addu'a huwa al-ibadah is the ultimate worship, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Azkar, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illa Allah, Wallahu Akbar, Wala hawla wala quwata illa billahi al-azim. I'm sitting a thousand times, uh, Astaghfirullah al-azim, or two thousand, ten thousand, as much as you can. Sending the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, reciting the Quran with a difference of opinion, to come out of the dispute, just sit and listen, enjoy the recitation of the Qur'an and ponder over its meaning. These are all forms of worship. Do not sleep on those nights which you assume it is most likely to be Laylat al-Qadr. And my advice, as I said in the beginning of the program, the remaining six nights. Do not miss a single night out of that, or actually five nights. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Umm Fatima from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have uh, two, two to three questions. No. Uh, the first one is that uh, I saw your uh, videos on Hajj. Okay, uh, since inshallah I'm planning to go for Hajj this year. MashaAllah. Uh, I understood everything from that video. There's nothing that I have any doubt. There's only one part that I doubt. Mm. Uh, the thing is that, uh, Sheikh, the ihram that we wear. What I thought always was that uh, the ihram has to be like that. We cannot remove our ihram. We do not have a bath in our ihram. But when I saw the video, I have gathered that we can uh, have a bath in the ihram uh, and we can also change our ihram. And uh, now I want to know uh, what is the purpose of ihram as such is in, uh, that if we have to change our ihram and if we can have a bath uh, when we are in a state of ihram, then what is the purpose of the clothing that we take as ihram? No. Thank you, sister. That is one question. Mm. And another question is that, uh, Sheikh, can we apply a moisturizer on, on our hands and our face as they get too much dried uh, during our uh, period of ihram? As long as it's not scented, yes. As long as it's not scented. Mm. And uh, how do we know it's not scented? It does say. Because I guess all the cosmetics that we get uh, it, it, are scented, it, it, I guess. It does say. And if you purchase it from Mecca, they make certain that you have, uh, you know, these... Uh, cosmetics or uh, body lotions and all of that okay. which is not scented. Okay, okay. So we can purchase it. Yeah. Uh, another thing, uh, uh, Dr. Salah, uh, um, 
uh, do we, uh, is it mandatory to wear socks when we are praying? Because uh, now when I'm going for Tarawih in Masjid, uh, the lady said and said that I wear socks. Hmm. I, according, so to I the more correct, according to the more correct view, yes. Whether you're praying you by yourself at home oh. or in the Masjid, and uh -huh. there is a hadith in the Sagar narrated by Umm Salama radiallahu anha. Uh, can a woman pray only in dir'a and khimar? The Prophet sallallahu said, if the dir'a is long enough, if your clock, if your abaa is long enough to cover your feet, you don't need to wear socks. So the purpose is to cover uh, the feet in the prayer. This is for women, of course. Okay? So it is not that you have to wear socks. No, if you're wearing long abaa and it is covering your feet, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to wear socks if you don't want to. Okay. Sister Umu Fatima said she watched the 11 episodes of Hajj step by step. And I invoke Allah the Almighty to accept this humble effort from us. Alhamdulillah, it has been very beneficial to many people who were going for Hajj or Umrah. Uh, let me take this call, then I will continue. Salama. Javed from the UK. Javed, Salama alaikum, Brother Javed. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? Alhamdulillah, very good, thank you. How My you? dear brother, please accept all our condolences for the uh, death of our and the martyrdom of our brothers who are leaving the Finsbury uh, Mosque. Uh, may Allah have mercy on them and whomever you see in the UK convey my message to them that we pray for the martyrs and we ask Allah the Almighty to have mercy on them. They died on blessed uh, time, mashallah, during the Ramadan time, and I believe they were leaving from the masjid after the prayer. May Allah have mercy on them, and may Allah grant a, a, a great deal of patience to their families, and may Allah the Almighty punish the perpetrators. Ameen, Allahumma Ameen. Indeed, it was very sad. Uh, Sheikh, I have uh, three questions, but before then, I just really wanted to thank you very much. I've been watching your program for a long time now. Alhamdulillah. And Alhamdulillah, I've benefited quite a lot. So, uh, Jazakallah khair. May mm. Allah accept from you and from mm. the whole of uh, the Huda team. Amen. And may Allah make uh, the deed way heavy for you guys on the scale of good deeds, inshallah. Amen. Amen. Jazakallah khair. And thank you so much. So, my, my first question is uh, when, when I come to uh, join the Salah and the row in front of me is full. Where is uh, best for me to start the new row? I've been told that it's better to start in line uh, behind the imam and touch the person in front of me so that he then walks back. Or is it uh, better to, to start at the end so that I disturb only one person? Okay, it seems like I didn't get the question rightly. I would appreciate if you can repeat it, Brother Javed. Okay, uh, so if, if I join uh, a salah and the row in front of me is complete mm. is full mm. and if i have to start a new row yeah i got you better question, to yeah. start yeah i got you okay yes okay just any like other one. questions so yeah my second question is about zakah is it possible to give uh zakah for dawah purposes so there's organizations in the uk who invite people to islam okay so, uh so that's the second question and the third question is that I was looking for um, uh, a mortgage and there is an Islamic bank in the UK but when I was reading uh, through it, it I, I was a bit confused. I'm in doubt as to whether it is uh, really halal or haram. Is there a way that I can send you a link uh, to the bank so that you, if you have time you can have a look for me please? Okay, but it won't be before Ramadan by the way. No, no, that's fine, that's fine, okay. no problem at all. Yes, I've been receiving questions like that and, and, and papers and documents. So in order to read them, I would rather read my sabaq and word of the Qur'an. So after Ramadan, I'll be happy to do that, inshallah. Go ahead and send it, and the brothers will collect your uh, um, inquiry, inshallah. As far as for giving da'wah to, uh, I'm sorry, for giving zakah to da'wah organizations, if the money is spent in either printing and distributing the da'wa brochures and da'wa materials for non-Muslims, yes, it is permissible. Because when we look into the ayah, uh, number 60, chapter number 9 of Surah At-Tawbah, uh, in which Allah the Almighty determined those who are eligible to receive the zakah, which is the mandatory alms, he said, 
وفي سبيل الله The word في سبيل الله For the sake of Allah You know even uh, the armies and the jihad process and all of that was prescribed for the purpose of da'wah Okay So if we look into the word في سبيل الله that it encompasses also inviting people to the deen of Allah informing people about the religion of Islam I perfectly understand that it should be the duty of the rich countries instead of wasting their money right and left in nonsense and supporting the da'wah organizations because this is the Muslims money but since they are not doing that it becomes our duty as Muslims becomes our duty to convey this message so you can fund it from the mandatory zakah and obviously if this is the case then also from the voluntary charity I hope my answer is clear uh, if you begin the prayer behind an Imam and the first row is complete or second row, or the row in front of you is complete there is no room in it there are two things that some people assume that I have to pull somebody from the row in front of me so that he will uh, join me so that my prayer will not be invalidated because I'll be by myself in the line no it would be invalid if you choose to stand by yourself in a line while there is a room but you do not pull anyone you stay where you are where to stand right behind the Imam in the middle of the row so the row doesn't begin from the right nor from the left it begins right from behind the Imam then whenever a second person comes he will line up to your right hand side a third person would come to your left hand side so we will start filling up right and left right and left so that the Imam will be in the middle of any row whether it is the first row or the last row okay barakallahu feekum um, the incident of the Finsbury uh, Park Masjid is a very heinous crime and it is an act of terrorism and the UK government must declare that it is an act of terrorism and all the perpetrators including the media which have been constantly bashing and stereotyping Muslims and didn't give them their enough due gratitude for saving many lives after the burning of the huge building uh, you know when the people instead of the Muslims instead of running away just to save their lives they and their children went door to door to knock on the people's doors because everybody was asleep the casualty would have been tremendous you know a lot of people would have been burned while they're asleep but it is the duty of every Muslim to save lives very very proud of my Muslim community my dear Muslim brothers and sisters keep doing the great work regardless what the evil people say about you may Allah bless you you do it for the sake of Allah those Muslim families who have saved a lot of lives may Allah bless you you are indeed a true Muslim you've done the true Muslim practice that if any true Muslim happened to be there would have done the same you can imagine the amount of reward that Allah the Almighty is saving for you for saving such lives and the criminals and the perpetrators who targeted those Muslim brothers and sisters while leaving from the masjid may Allah curse them and those who support them Ameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Brother Haytham from Sudan. Yeah, Haytham. Assalamu alaikum. Naam. Assalamu alaikum. I have one question. Go ahead. Yes, I am here. Uh, connection is terrible, Brother Haytham. Would you please try again? Haytham. Try one more time, inshallah. The connection is really bad. Thank you. Umu Fatima from the KSA. She said she have watched the 11 videos of Hajj Step by Step. 
she understood everything and she is asking to confirm about while in a state of ihram I've mentioned in the video that it is perfectly okay to change your ihram outfit and also to take a bath yes because it is not one of the restrictions of ihram al-fahmu ni'mah understanding is a great blessing and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the sound hadith man yurid illahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi al-deen whenever Allah wants to uh, bless somebody he will make him comprehend his deen one of the main reasons I filmed this program now mashallah it's 10 years or maybe even more was because of the amount of wrong practices that I have been seeing and observing in the haram a lot of myth and a lot of people make things very difficult for the pilgrims and the mu'tamirin and they make the life miserable they make it very hard upon them they complicate everything wallahi if I go through the things which people make in order to make people's makeup in order to make people's life miserable so the Hajj becomes very complicated process you will be very surprised this is one of the things which I have not that's why I put emphasis on that I see some brothers wearing ihram normally the ihram is in white it doesn't have to be white but all the ihram is in white white sheets right a few days after Ihram and in Hajj and Min and Arafah, I see them wearing gray or dark. Why? Because their Ihram has become so dirty. They are like beggars and homeless. Why? Because they are under the impression that if you are in a state of Ihram, you cannot change your Ihram, you cannot take it off, you cannot take a shower, you must be dirty. Wrong. Wrong approach. If your ihram is soiled with impurities, urine soiled your uh, ihram while you're answering the call of nature, take it off, wash it off. Uh, your ihram has become dirty. You can pick up a new set, it's cheap, or you can wash it off and wear it again. That's perfectly okay. It is not like skin, you cannot take it off. People are afraid to take their ihram off like they're afraid to be skinned off. No, take it off, throw it away and, and pick up a new set. All of that is perfect. Because the purpose of ihram is to be in a sacred condition which requires you to avoid certain mahzurat which have been discussed in detail in the video like wearing perfume, okay, uh, covering your head for men or wearing any stitch clothes for men, for women covering the uh, face and the hands. Uh, your aba is dirty and your outer garment is impure for a reason or another. Take it off, wash it off and put on a new one. There is no problem. I'm going to sleep. Can I change my aba and I wear my, I wear my sleepwear or the other aba which I use for sleep? Absolutely perfect. Can I take a shower? Yes, but on the day of Arafah, don't take a shower. Don't worry about combing your hair for another reason. I'll talk about it inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Nabila from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Nabila. Um, I just have a question regarding uh, miscarriage. Uh, so I miscarried uh, at 10 weeks. So during the procedures, uh, um, there wasn't any, uh, the features of the baby wasn't, weren't visible. Mm. So I wanted to know what is the ruling on this? Is it ruled as me fast? Uh, should I continue to pray and fast? Or should I just wait for a specified period of time? Like, is it a ruling like me fast? I got your question, Sister Nabila. First of all, accept my condolence. May Allah Almighty give you better than what you lost. Twins, though, inshallah. I hope you remember to say the dua. As you said, if the fetus or the hanging blood clot which was miscarried they didn't have any figure no face nor hands nor feet then in this case the bleeding that follows the, mis the, that follows the miscarriage is an irregular bleeding unless if it coincides your irregular monthly period which means during the irregular bleeding you would need to make wudu uh, for each prayer once its time is due assalamu Sister Huda from Libya. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Huda. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. I've got a question. I just want to ask you about uh, 
learning English language. Uh, Are you gonna ask it in English, sister Huda? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, if someone uh, if someone wants to to learn English language um, with a British accent, can he uh, can he watch uh, British cartoons and uh, British movies? Uh? Uh, and why British accent? What do you like about the British accent? Excuse me, brothers uh, from the UK, brothers and sisters, no problem. Okay. I, I can't hear. Uh, I can't hear you. I got your question, Sister Hoda. Do you have any other questions? No, uh, I've got uh, just one question. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you can watch the news. You can watch the news. It will help you a great deal to learn the language as long as you understand the basics and mashallah you speak in, in English so uh, watching or hearing the news or hearing the BBC the radio station is actually better than watching because what you need is a hearing sense to pick up the accent that if you're interested in learning and imitating the British accent I don't know about that uh, brothers and sisters we'll take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a few minutes please stay tuned Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, Sister Aziza from Qatar I had another question. What if a traveler prayed the full prayer without shortening? Uh, shortening the prayer is an emphatic sunnah for a traveler. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he entered Mecca, he stayed for about 18 or 19 days and he used to shorten the prayers, the four rak'ahs of Dhuhr and Asr and Isha. He used to pray only two. And since he was the Imam, he used to order the followers, those who are local, to continue their prayer after he would make the sleep. So if the person is Musafir, it is an emphatic sunnah, highly recommended for him or her to shorten their prayers, the four rakah prayers, as long as they are travelers within the travel distance and also the travel number of days, time and distance. If the person happens to lead the prayer, also Sister Aziza asks, can he in this case pray uh, uh, full so that the followers will not be confused? Well, Rasulullah led the prayer and many of those who were following him were local and he prayed short and the locals would resume. And Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anh, afterward, whenever he would enter Mecca, he would pray the two, four rak'ah two, and he would say, Atimmu salatakum. So it is recommended also for the Imam upon making taslim after the second rak'ah, after the tashahud from the second rak'ah, is to say to the followers, complete your prayer since we are travelers. Also, it is recommended before beginning the prayer to alert the people that the Imam is going to shorten the prayer. This is how we educate people. But if you skip practicing the Sunnah in order um, not to confuse people, people would remain in this condition. They would not know what is the Salah for the Musafir and what, what is shortening and combining the prayers and what to do in case that you happen to be an Imam to a local people. Um, the following question from Amber from the uh, case A is a very interesting question. She says, uh, because women have days to make up for and also want to fast the six days of Shawwal, can I fast the six days of Shawwal with the intention of making up my days too? Very important question. And this is a time for it. And also, I would like to share with you, we will be receiving this question throughout the month of Shawwal, or at least the first three weeks of the month of uh, Shawwal. Why? Because in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ promised whoever will fast for the whole month of Ramadan, then another six days, any six days of the month of Shawwal, his reward will be equivalent to the reward of fasting for the entire year. So how to go about it after this call, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. 
a reach from the case. Hey, assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam, Sheikh. Happy Ramadan. Happy and blessed Ramadan uh, to you, Arij, and to your family. Uh, I have I have two questions. Go ahead. Uh, my first question is: I just now heard you t answering one question about Ram uh, about Ahram in Hajj, and you said it is uh, it is permissible to take a head bath in Ahram. Uh, when we take a head bath in Arena, and if our hair break and fall, is it okay? Because our hair should not break in Arena, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And my second question, yeah, and, uh, and my second question is: Go ahead. Uh, my relatives have a common practice in Eid al Adha when when they sacrifice the goat, they divide it into three parts. What do they do is they put the liver, kidney, brain, etc. Uh, they, whatever part they like in their part, and and the leftover they keep it in the other part. But but equal they keep. Uh, what I want to know is, do we need to divide all parts equally in of the goat in three parts, or we can do as we like? That is on Eid al Adha or. They do that voluntarily. Yeah, either other. Okay, okay. Thank you, Sister Arij from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abu Aisha from Sudan. Assalamu alaikum, my sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah. I said two questions yesterday. Two of them you answered regarding the Taraweeh and the Tahajjud. Uh, the third question I asked was about insurance because I'm working for an international organization and insurance, as I said yesterday, is deducted from source for life insurance and uh, for medical insurance as well. So mm. if you can just help to let me know if this can be utilized or we just have to ignore it and leave it as it is. Thank Aye. you very much. For the medical insurance which is provided by the company that you're working for or by the government and you did not choose to sign up for, enjoy it and there is no blame upon you because it is provided for you mandatory, okay? Especially if you're working for the government, then you don't have any problem with that. But if you choose to sign up for commercial insurance, if you have the choice, do not sign up for commercial insurance. There is the Takafuli insurance, and it is, mashallah, spreading uh, nowadays. And um, I think we'll get hold of one of the companies and their contracts, and I would like to share it with you in order to show you what is the meaning of Takafuli insurance, that the participants, the members in this kind of insurance are actually the owners or they are all considered as partners in this partnership. So whatever I pay is invested, my, well, my participation, my payment, and everybody else's payment. And accordingly, from the investment and the profit generated in lawful means, if any of us happen to be uh, sick, God forbid, needs medication, needs an MRI or X-ray or whatever, they give him a certain allowance, certain limit. You can run all the tests for free and the company will cover all of that. And then by the end of the year, they distribute and they share the profit, the remaining balance of the investment. This is takafuli, like in the case of syndicates. But in the case of the commercial insurance, there is one or more person or persons who are the owners of this company. You keep paying, and if you don't use it whatsoever, even once throughout the year, all the payments are gone. You know, it is like buying lot of tickets. On the other hand, somebody else uh, may make the first payment, then he gets in a car accident, God forbid, and he goes to the hospital and he spends a hundred or two hundred thousand. And after that, he quits uh, the payment. So he only paid one payment, hundred, hundred, hundred fifty bucks, and 
uh, he won the coverage of 100, 150 or 200,000. Uh, so the takafuli insurance is the ultimate solution where there is no error, there, there is no deception for either parties, whether the owners of the company or now we we'll call them the partners, not the members. Barakallahu fikum. Jazakallahu khairan, brother uh, Abu Aisha from Sudan. What about the six days of Shawwal? We said the hadith, which is talking about the virtues of fasting six days of Shawwal, but there is a condition, which is fasting Ramadan first. Okay, we did fast Ramadan, alhamdulillah, and we have 29 or 30 days to fast, only six days, it doesn't have to be consecutive. But half of the ummah or more, because normally women outnumber men, have a problem now. Because most women, they experience the menses. So that means during Ramadan, they have missed mandatory missing six, seven, or eight, or more, or less days in Ramadan. So in order to get the virtues of fasting six days of Shawwal after Ramadan, the promised reward, I have to complete fasting Ramadan first. And this is what the scholars say. You got to make up the missed days first. So there is one sister who owes eight days or nine days, and now she needs to fast another six days. We're talking about 15 days. Don't you think this is a lot? in one month, which is the month of Shawwal. Let's take this call from Norway first. Muhammad. Yeah, Muhammad, assalamu alaikum. Muhammad. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, brother, I like all the programs. They are very good, mashallah. Thanks for the program. Barakallahu feek, akhi. Go ahead. Uh, my question is, uh, um, if I want to finish the Quran once in a month, uh, what should I do? And, uh, and how many sunnahs do? My that, that, that was my first question. And uh, how many sunnahs do we have in a day? And what's the reward of making them? And what's the reward of reciting a lot of surah al-ikhlas and uh, sending a lot of uh, salawat on Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hadar Absher. Insha Allah, brother Muhammad from Norway, I will answer your questions. But now I want you also to pay attention to the answer of this question, all of you brothers and sisters. So some of the scholars said, no, 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 you gotta make up the missed days first, then fast the six days of Shawwal, which may be a burden some for many sisters who cannot fast for 15 or more days in one month. So she's asking, would it be possible that if I fast the missed days, like I missed six days. So if I fast the six days with dual intention, an intention of making up the missed days, an intention of fasting the six days of Shawwal, we'll say the answer briefly, no. Why not? This issue is known among the scholars even of the past as tashriq, overlapping. Overlapping of two different acts of worship. And overlapping in general is not forbidden all the time. No, rather sometimes it is perfectly okay. Let me give you a couple examples. Overlapping between the ghusl, performing ghusl on Friday, which is an emphatic sunnah, and performing the ghusl because you happen to have a husband and wife relationship on Friday morning, and now you need to perform ghusl in order to lift the measure of impurity. So now I owe two ghusl. One for removing the major impurity, and another one in order to prepare for Jum'ah to get the reward of the promised reward. No, you don't have to do two ghost, because one will do it. Which one? The ghost for Jum'ah? Of course not. The ghost which is intended to lift the major impurity, and the mission has been achieved. You're clean already. You don't have to perform. So your intention, I'm, I'm lifting the major impurity after having sex, and also preparing for the Jum'ah, the Ghusl, which is recommended on Friday. You get the intention of both. Another example, there are many examples, by the way, but we weren't out of time. When you enter the masjid, it is recommended not, it's an emphatic sunnah, not to sit before praying the greeting of the masjid. Okay. The Adhan is called for Dhuhr, and I enter the masjid, and I say there are four rak'ahs sunnah before Dhuhr. 
So I started praying the Sunnah. Do I have to pray also the greeting of the Masjid? Of course not. Because once you pray any prayer, whether it's nafila, emphatic or non-emphatic Sunnah, or istikhara, or even the Father prayer, that will do it. Because the purpose of prescribing the greeting of the Masjid is not to sit down before praying. So if you pray anything, that will do it. Done. What about fasting? This is an entirely different act of worship. Faridah. You're making up the missed days of Ramadan. And this is a recommended act seeking an independent reward. So there is no overlapping. This is according to the vast, vast majority of the scholars. Some of the scholars of the Shafi'i school of thought said, you will get a reward yani, if you only fast the six days which you are supposed to make up or the seven days. And you made them in Shawwal. You made them in Shawwal. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> You've made up the missed days. And meanwhile, you will happen to receive a reward of fasting six days because it happened to be in Shawwal. But it is not the promised reward of fasting and independence six days so that you will get the reward of fasting for the whole year. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said so because fasting Ramadan 30 days for innocence times 10, the good deeds, that's 300. And fasting six days in Shawwal, that's time 10, that's 60. So it is 360 days. That is like a year of fasting if you do that on regular basis, it will be equivalent to fasting for your entire lifetime, which is the meaning of the word Ad-Dahr, the lifetime. My dear brothers and sisters, we definitely ran out of, uh, out of time, and I hope to see you tomorrow, inshallah, <coughs> an hour before this time, as usual. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate